Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the inland Northwest. The wonders of glass, beautiful, precious, and fragile. It can be molded and shaped into almost anything with the help of a lot of heat and a determinate amount of time and energy. Through the many centuries of its existence, glass has been a fascination to many. Today, the fascination continues with new ideas and techniques married with old proven practices, creating an ever-present growth in the glass artisans of today. Steve Adams, an 18-year veteran in the glass business, initially intended on working in the architecture business, graduating with a degree in architecture from the University of Idaho in 1972. But his future just didn't seem to work out that way. The very first glass I ever melted was in uh, 1969 as a ceramic student at the University of Idaho, and I was playing around with melting marbles inside of pots, uh, ceramic pots that I was making, um, and using them as a glaze. So that was my first experiments, and then for, uh, for a while, I, and I still do, make stained glass windows. And After his college education, Steve began a business in stained glass. And I used to have a store over near Gonzaga where we uh, did a whole bunch of different things, um, built windows on a commission basis and taught classes and sold materials and supplies, and I was also a glass blower there. So it really helped to have a, a retail store that uh, made money so I could afford to spend my time developing talents as a glassblower. Now, while in the thick of production during the winter season, Steve is busy producing and filling orders from last year. Most of the work uh, goes to the East Coast uh, and where there's a, um, there's a great interest in blown glass back there. And there are lots of glassblowers, lots of competition and lots of people doing work that's a little bit different. Um, so for me, that works. Once a year, I can make a trek and go back east, which I'll do uh, this year again in February, and uh, will basically kind of take orders that will get me through the rest of the year so I can come back here and live in obscurity and, and just and make, make the work. Working behind gas-fired ovens that range between 2,000 and 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, Steve begins by dipping into a big ceramic pot full of molten glass with a stainless steel blowpipe. After gathering enough glass on the end of the pipe, Steve then blows air into it to make a bubble. By continually reheating the glass and shaping it while it cools, the object is formed and allowed to cool at a slow rate. Like anything, it just takes a whole lot of practice. Um, and I'm a believer that most, most talents are developed through time. I don't feel like I have any, any great gifted talent, you know, very much different than anybody else. But I've spent, you know, 18 years doing it. So that, I mean, you, you just, you got to be real slow if you don't get good in that much time. I've been just real fascinated by the material itself. Hot glass is just, it's magical stuff. It's, uh, in one hand, it's, it's uh, real frightening because it's so hot and it's fragile and it you know, can be really sharp. Um, so I'm, I'm just real amazed by the material and have been driven for different reasons to, uh, to play with it and to learn how to handle it and to make a living from it. Bit by bit and piece by piece, glass and lead are pieced together in what looks to be a puzzle except there is no guessing here. Meet David Glass, a man who definitely fits his name. If I had a nickel for every time somebody asked me that, uh, I think uh, maybe in a previous lifetime I, I chose this name just for the cosmic irony of it. That's what I've been telling people lately. <laughs> well, I've been working with stained glass for about 14 years uh, as a hobby for the first few years, and then I started making real windows and it just developed into a business. David's business ranges from repairing broken glass fixtures and windows to making custom stained glass pieces for about anything, including this unique mailbox. It's easy to learn, um, fairly easy to do, but it's hard to do well. Anybody can, almost anybody can put together a window, but uh, it does take a fine touch, a good eye, and lots of practice. By responding to space, David seems to come up with some very unique patterns and colors. In the blue bathroom, I wanted something that carried the, the shapes and colors of the surroundings. I wanted it sort of traditional, but uh, 
I like to throw in a few surprises, too. These kitchen windows are, according to David, a takeoff on Frank Lloyd Wright. And this sitting room window was designed by fellow artist Louise Cotis and assembled by David. Well, it's a, uh, a fascinating and seductive medium, which can be bad in the sense that a poor quality window can still dazzle you. And a lot of people really don't know what quality is. Um, but that fascinating, seductive quality fascinates and seduces me. I love playing with it. Uh, I like to see the way the light affects it, how it affects the light. It's fun, basically, is what it comes down to. Glass into glass, melding together to make interesting and beautiful designs. Sherry Boyd is the talented artist here who uses heat to melt glass into glass, fusing them together. Sherry, an ex-physical therapy worker, got started in fusing glass from another famous glass fusion artist, Richard Lalonde. Oh, it's a lot easier than doing leaded glass. It has a lot, lot more freedom because you're not having to worry about structural s soundness of a piece. You can pile glass uh, without worrying about inner cuts, or you can grind out glass. You could put a hole in it, and, <laughs> and it would fuse all right where you wouldn't do that in a normal stained glass window. It all melts together, and, and uh, it's a lot l more loose as far as accuracy. You don't have to cut just so, or <laughs> and it, it's uh, a lot of fun. I think the understanding for all the different works of the medium and collaborating them in one piece is, you know, the ultimate of the art form. And uh, or you know, or being very simple and doing just one thing. It, it just is. There's so many subjects, so many designs <laughs> that come to your head. There's. It's just very difficult to get bored with it. Glass fusing for Sherry is exciting and rewarding, but she is the first to admit it isn't her first love. These windows at the Central Lutheran Church in Spokane were painted by Sherry, who was commissioned to try and match some existing windows from a manufacturer back east who has since gone out of business. With glass painting, you're painting with light, and you're blocking out certain areas to you know, give a contrast of where you want light to come through and show contouring of the shapes of things, or uh, usually it's to tell a story and to be more literal about a, a subject. Since beginning glass painting in 1979, Sherry studied under Joachim Pensken and Lutz Hochschild, two famous glass painters in Germany in 1984. I'd like to get some more abstract, contemporary type uh, architectural jobs, but now it seems like I do more uh, figurative, literal uh, church jobs mostly. And when I was in Germany, I studied the more of the abstract symbolism type uh, approach to designing for glass. I'm hooked, <laughs> I guess. I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's not that easy to do. It's always a challenge. I don't feel like I get stagnant or, in, or anything. And, and there's always something around the corner that's a little exciting to try. And, and in glass, there's so many different mediums uh, or different areas to work in it. It's creative and it, and it provokes good response from people and that's exciting. And uh, it's, it's a happy thing to do. <laughs> If you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS-TV, South 3911 Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS-TV.